Hello, I'm Rory from RateMyFuneral.com. That was Rate, by the way. Welcome back. This is another tutorial. Today, I sat down to do something, and then I spotted a comment on the website and changed my mind about what I was doing and decided to just do this instead. Um, quick, easy-ish. And uh, it's got a few nice little tips and bits and pieces that uh, yeah, you might find useful. So uh, let me show you what I'm talking about. Okay, so basically um, a little while back I did a tutorial on how to create this um, sort of plastic and glass text uh, with the screws, um, which I found an image of by John Buckley. Um, and uh, yeah, that was really good fun. Um, and obviously it went down quite well. Um, but one of the comments I noticed that came in, uh, it, uh, actually it was, it was yesterday, um, was that they were looking at this basically this the image that's in this link um, and they wanted to know sort of how to do it so uh, this is the image that they're talking about um, and uh, I like this I think this looks really cool um, so I thought well let's have a go um, and there was a couple of little bits and pieces in there that I noticed that were quite useful um, and until I kind of sat down and did them I wasn't I, you know, I kind of learnt them there and then. So um, yeah, let's uh, let's see what we're going to do uh, to to try and recreate this. Um, now, one thing that I do want to do is get a font that has a four like this. Now, this is actually really difficult to do unless you specifically know of one, um, because generally font previews uh, tend to just have the letters, so you don't always get to see if it's got this style of four. Um, I hunted around everywhere, and uh, I eventually found one that did have one, certainly similar. Um, from here at fontfabric.com and this one Lovelo uh, it comes in these styles but this is the one we're going to deal with um, and it has that sort of style of four so uh, we can use that as a kind of template now it's not exactly the same as this one uh, which is what I'm going to try and create here but it's not uh, not too important so um, let's uh, let's start with that so I've downloaded the, and installed the font um, let's get into cinema and see where to begin Right, so the first thing we want is a text spline, and we're going to put a 4 in there. Okay, so that's obviously the typical style of 4, which is not what we want, which is why I had to find out this one, which I'm using Lovelo. Like I say, it's not exact. Um, oh, let me do not go too far ahead of myself there. I'm just changing the plane from X, uh, Y to XZ, so it's, uh, XZ, sorry, so it's sitting on the floor. Um, and let me just... Uh, make that a bit bigger so we know what we're dealing with here. Um, if we hop into the top view, we can kind of see this here. Uh, if we look at our image, so a couple of things that we need to change are the positions of this um, and it's kind of where it's all sitting and the fact that that edge is straight there and so on and so forth. So let's make those adjustments. Now unfortunately it does mean I'm going to have to make the text editable, uh, which means that this is no longer parametric, I can't easily change it. But as I know what I'm trying to achieve here, that's just fine with me. I want a 4, that's cool. So I'm going to highlight the text and press C and then that will make it editable. If you go to points mode and the select tool, you can then grab points and do things with them. So let's grab these two here, because uh, that's in quite a bit. So I'm just going to pull those ones in. Um, this one I'm going to pull down so it's level, like so. And these two I think pull down, um, they're a little bit longer than that one. So yeah, that should be okay like that. Um, I want these ones to be about the same. Um, now you can do all sorts of uh, measuring techniques, but this is the simplest way. Just create a cube, make it the approximate size like that. Yep, so that's fine. And then just place that there and grab these. And we just know to bring those up to there. Ah, so something that's happened here, if we just zoom in and have a look, this is actually the way uh, this uh, font is being interpreted by interpreted. Did I really just say interpreted? Well, that's a new word. I'm going to keep that. Um, so the way this is being interpreted is that uh, it's got this extra uh, point here, which is causing me some issues. So I'm just going to highlight that one and delete it. There we go. Um, and grab these two again. Just click and hold and drag. And boom. we're not looking for exact exactness. Um, so that will do. Uh, but I have noticed that that line there is not quite straight. So let's just get in there and just move that down until it's straight. There we go. Okay, so that's that first bit. We can get rid of that cube now. We don't need it. Um, 
the do you know what I think these are actually a little bit too big so now that I want to now that I know that they're approximately the same if I grab all of them press T for scale I can actually just pull those in just a little bit like that there we go that's what I want right next thing I want to make another point here so I'll press K for the knife and just literally if I line it up with this one and go across again make the uh, line straight and that's in about the right place so I can now grab this one here and pull that in so it's straight there we go okay so that's looking pretty good um, these top ones if we look at the image what we'll see is that that line is about level with that one there so uh, we can grab these and pull those in uh, that's going up that line there so back here is about right so maybe just a little bit back there okay so there we go we've made our four that's great. Um, okay, so our zero we need to create next. Now, one of the things with zeros, I should have actually made a copy of that before I made it editable so that I could just make the zero out of it. I'm creating a circle, what am I doing? Um, so, but uh, let's just do this. Um, what am I doing? Text, that's it, yes. Z, because yeah, because now obviously all my settings are different, but uh, let's just do a zero in there and scale it up so that it's about about right it's I think about there yeah that looks pretty close okay um, now I want something a little bit fatter than that I mm, no, that's not too bad I would like these lines a little straighter to be honest um, uh, you could probably find a half decent font in here somewhere that would do it but I'll tell you what for for the for this and what is that one any good no um, let's just stick with the old uh, that one yeah that, that'll be all right for this for what we're doing today that's fine okay so we've got our two texts so let's just name these four and zero cool okay and put them in an order we'll keep them like that so we've got one that is parametric one that isn't that'll come in handy in a bit let's go back to the main view a second um, and let's just grab these two and just for tidiness sake we'll just position that somewhere in the middle of the scene just so that when we create things it's a bit easier okay so let's get the four and we're going to go to this menu here and hold down alt and put it into an extrude um, and we'll do the same for the zero that puts them both in and then what we can do is highlight them both uh, let's just name those as well first now as well so four and zero uh, we'll highlight them both and we'll go to objects. Now we don't want it going in that direction because that's not right at all. We want that to come up. So maybe if we make it go up about 12, something like that. Yeah, that should be okay. Um, let's also go to display grid shading with lines and that way we can see what we're doing a little easier. Um, the original you can see has these... Ah, ah, I didn't do this, look. This is a really important point is that it has these sort of like bevels on the edges um, so we need to do that let's go back to our four a second let's switch off the uh, extrude you don't have to but it just makes it so we can see what we're doing um, here's how to do this so let's go to this point mode and we want to select them all now you can either go to the menu and go select all or you just click and hold and drag over them whatever is your personal preference and that's it done right next thing we right click and we do chamfer now if we just do that it's going to round the edges but we don't want them round we want them flat so there's a tick box here flat boom um, and if we click and drag now we can get that to about the rightness the rightness so about four that looks pretty good cool yep I'm happy with that right now let's go and turn our extrude back on and go back to the main view there we go now we've got those edges how we want them so that's fine and we're gonna grab both of the extrudes again and go to caps and turn on fill a cap for both um, and constrain just to keep the sizes correct um, now that's a little bit too much so let's pull those back uh, about three yeah that should be okay yeah um, yeah that should be all right um, maybe if it's a bit too much I'm not sure now nah, let's stick with three that's fine um, only one step because we just that's all we want that's that's great okay 
So that's the first bit of the text setup. Now we'll do it now because it gets it done, um, but we now need to texture these. Uh, so what we've got here is we've got a kind of white looking plasticiness and then a, a little bit of a wood kind of edge. So let's start off by creating the wood. It's quite easy just to create a relatively cool looking piece of wood. Um, I say cool, I mean there's only so much cool you can get with wood, but basically add a noise texture uh, in the color channel and go into the noise, change that to something such as wavy turbulence um, and change your scale. So relative scale, let's put the first one up to hmm, maybe not quite that much, but uh, it's, uh, it's all fun and games. Um, two and a half thousand and we'll maybe do this again. Obviously these aren't exact numbers, you just do it till you it looks about right. So cool, um, and we're going to shrink that right down to, I don't know, 17 or something. Cool. These colors here, um, you can go and find yourself some browns and uh, and whatnot there if you wish. So you can end up with that, so that's quite close. Um, but just for the sake of it, um, I'll put that over there. Go into this color, choose screen color, and I'll just click somewhere on the, uh, the lighter area of the brown. Maybe make it just a touch lighter. And the darkness, yeah, that, that, I mean, that's, that's all right like that. Cool. Okay, let's uh, just put that one up a little bit. There we go. Maybe change the seed, make it look a bit different. I don't know. Right, cool. Uh, specular, let's just turn that down a little bit, put on a touch of reflection and a bit of Fresnel. There we go. Right, so that's our shiny hood and we're going to just double click and label that wood. Let's put that on our four. Okay, so I want to make sure that the wood is going in the right direction, which it seems to be. I think I need to, need to go back in there, go to the noise and maybe reduce this to 10 and just have a look at that. Yeah, that's not too bad. Cool, okay. Let's all now look at what we're gonna do next. Now, in order to put a color that is separate on the uh, on the caps, there's there you can there's a couple of ways of doing it. One, you can make the object editable, and then it gives you some extra levels that you can you can texture, or you can actually use uh, the selection tag here with a couple of codes. So that's what we're going to do. So I'll just create a texture that's white, and put that onto the four. And now obviously that's done the whole thing, but we want to make sure that it's past the piece of wood, and then go into here, and in your selection you basically choose. Uh, which cap you're gonna put you want to put that on so I'm gonna say on cap I, I'm guessing C1 is gonna be the underside so if we just spin down and have a look yeah so that's the underside um, now I don't know how to put I don't know if you can put multiple ones of these in here I haven't figured that out um, so what I've just done is just made a copy of that and changed it to C2 and then that puts it on the top um, I'll make a copy of that as well and change that to R2 and that does the rounding. So, oh, and one more copy, which will, this will be R1. And then that does the rounding for the other side. Um, when I look at this image, it's worth noting that it does seem like by this text here is black on the rounding and on the bottom of all of these seems to be black on the rounding there. So I'm gonna mimic that and create another texture, which will be black. Just like that is fine, and I'm gonna put that on the R1. And then when you look underneath, you get black under there. That's great. And then in order to put that on the zero, grab all of those, oops, grab all of those and just hold control and drag them onto there like that and bang. That's your numbers textured and done and ready. Cool, so we now need to create um, the ones that go down below it. So let's um, put these together and press Alt G and that puts them in a group. So we'll say that that's 40 there. And I'm just gonna make, grab these two and make a copy, can hold control and drag them. Okay, so these are the thinner ones. So we'll grab both of these extrudes and change the, uh, the height now. Obviously they're right in the middle of those other ones. So I'm just gonna drag those down a bit so we can see what we're doing. Go back to these and change that to something like four, yeah, four. And the caps down to maybe like one. Uh, 
And I'm just going to do two on the bottom one so that that just stands out that little bit more. And cool, right? Okay. Um, let's get that into position. Um, so it's going to sit sort of probably about there. Uh, let's just have a look at how thin these actually are. Yeah, they're probably a bit thinner than that. I think I think everything maybe is a little bit big. So let's just grab this top one object, put that down to about 10. Grab these bottom two, maybe make those two. Uh, and then go into the caps. Leave, the, make the bottom one one. And this one 0 0.5, mm, 0 0.8. Yeah, um, maybe make this one point. I just want the black line to sort of pop out from the bottom. You won't see it yet, obviously, because we haven't done any lighting or anything, but right. Okay. So we'll say that this is our fat 40 and we're going to group these two together and we're going to call these the thin 40. Cool. Okay. <laughs> and uh, let's just put that roughly where we want it. Cool. Okay. Next is we want to grab the fin 40 and put that in a cloner. By default it goes up, we don't want it to go up, so we're going to make it go down and put them, what, about uh, eight between? And then start just adding more and that sends it down. Now, obviously at this point here, it's a bit tricky um, to see how far we want to go down, so we need to sort of duplicate all of this. So what I will do is highlight everything, put it into a another null by alt, Put it into another null by pressing... Oh, I can't talk anymore. Hang on. <clears throat> Put it into another null by pressing Alt and G. <laughs> and then we'll call it um, 40 again. Yeah. Um, and what we do is create an instance of that 40. So you don't press Alt or anything. You literally just, with that highlighted, just choose instance. And that gives you an instance. And we turn that one up. Press R for rotate and then space to go back. And put this about where we want it. Um, let's see. Okay, so if we put that about there, that's that's fine. Now we need to get the number of clones right. So we just open up our cloner again and keep adding these. And let's just uh, go to the bottom and have a look and just keep making them until we're at the bottom. Cool, okay, so that's there. Now, next little piece of observation that I did notice was in the original one. Uh, right, in this in this one, you can actually see uh, this four appears to be twisted a little bit. So let's uh, just hop into our two versions and we'll grab the four for both of them. Hit rotate. Now we need to watch this because our axis is in a very bit of a strange place here. So let's uh, see if we can adjust this if we press the axis modification tool is it going to let me do it it is cool okay so obviously the machine's struggling a little bit but let's get the axis for the four around in the middle somewhere that's quite useful that turning into a box actually you can see a little bit easier right so about there cool okay they'll switch off axis modification and go to rotation and let's just rotate that slightly. Uh, not too much. I mean, it's it's only it is only a little bit on that one. About that. Um, and let's get our instance. Uh, is that two? Is that all right? Let's just see. Is that zero? Yeah, the zero is twisted as well. Look, so we need to do the same with the zero. Okay, so let's access modification tool and put that. Do you know what? If I actually, I'd probably be better off if I just go into the cloner because obviously there's so much going on here. It's going a bit slow. So just put that to one for the minute. Um, now grab these zeros and just rotate the oh don't forget to turn off that okay and rotate that just a little bit cool okay and we'll move the zero 
ever so slightly nearer. And get our instance, and we'll just move that over a bit, and over this way a little bit. Okay. That should be about right. And now, if I remember rightly, this was on about 39, so we'll just put 39 back in there. Bang. Um, I wonder if that's a bit many, a bit many. Uh, there is quite a few in there. Let's uh, go to the cloner. We'll just move the cloner down a, like uh, a tiny bit, just a tiny amount. Uh, maybe make that minus nine. Nip to the underside and just take away some of these instances. Instances, clones. There we go. Right. Cool. Okay. Let's zoom out and have a look. Okay. Yep. Yeah, no, that's not looking too bad at all. Cool. So that's a good start, definitely. Right, let's, uh, I'm just going to go in, I just want to tilt that for slightly less. Like that, there we go. Cool. Um, and let's move the instance. That way, just a little bit. That'll do, right. Cool, okay, and next, we want to uh, create the under that's there. Let's see, so if we go into in here and grab the zero, I'll click and drag, and what we can do is go into there and make that say under. Um, and we need to shrink that down quite a bit, so 30 or so, and change its plane to XZ, no, to XY, sorry. Now because the uh, extrude isn't linked to the, the, plane, the plane setting in the text, we have to actually go to the extrude and stop the movement from being on that axis and actually put it on this axis here. Let's get it now in the right place, which is just over here. Okay, and we'll just uh, zoom in and have a look and see what we're actually doing here. Now our under has got some slightly funky looks to it here. I'm just going to get that axis and put that in the right place. Axis move tool. Put that to the middle. Okay, and I'm just also going to switch off that for the moment while we line this up. Okay. So... Turn off axis move. Let's get this so that it's sitting at about the right angle. Raise it up a little bit. Uh, go into caps and let's reduce the size of these caps. Uh, we don't need one on the back at all. So, and we'll just reduce this one. There we go. Um, I think I want to find the one that I labeled as R2 and make sure that that is black. And there we go, so that gives us a little black ridge there. Um, perhaps go into this text and, yep, that's bold. Perhaps bring in the horizontal spacing a little bit and make it a bit bigger. Cool, okay. Okay. Let's grab, make sure that it's sitting on there straight, something like that. Cool. And is the wood grain going in the right direction? No. So we've got problems with our wood grain on here, so we need to go into this one here, change it from UV mapping to flat, and then go to our texture tag and rotate this around until it's about the right place, which I think is there. Yeah, that looks looks cool um, you can always just maybe reduce the scale a little bit just for that one just to make it sit a bit better uh, finally this cap is maybe a little bit too fat so let's make it 0 0.8 cool okay right so that's it made and built the next la and last bit to do is to light the scene let's turn all that back on and find an approximate angle that we're going to use. Something like that. 
Okay, and make a camera. Camera, bang, there we go. Um, to light it, I'm gonna use Infidio. Obviously you don't have to, if you don't have it, you can light it and do it all yourself, but this just makes life so much easier. So I'm just gonna add Infidio into the scene and uh, position it so that it's just at the bottom. Like so. And now if we just do a quick render, we can sort of see how we're looking. I've just noticed the R is getting lost into the four there. So that's not looking too bad already. Um, let's fix this. So this is actually under and we just want to move that that way a little bit. Maybe we need to just make it a tad smaller. Something like that. Okay, um, what else should we do? We can turn on in our effects, we can turn on ambient occlusion. That'll just help us with our shadows. Uh, in video, uh, we can go in here and go to the controls, change the floor color. Um, I'll just take the color straight off this image here. Uh, so that's the lighter area. And then that's the darker area. And I'm just gonna make it just a touch darker. There we go. Maybe just a little more. Okay, cool. Um, what else can we do? Let's go into the lighting and just turn off everything except for the hair light and go into the hair light settings. I'm just gonna turn up the shadow darkness a little bit and let's have a quick look. Okay, so down here we've got some nice dark shadows, which is what we want, so that's great. Uh, we'll now enable the uh, key light and we're going to the key light settings and we'll just put the shadow darkness up on that a little bit uh, and maybe pull its brightness down just a touch. And let's have a look. Okay, yep, that's looking pretty good. I'll tell you something I do just wanna do is go into our matte color. Um, let's make this color slightly more white, but maybe just with a very, very slight touch of yellow to it. Um, go into reflection and just put a tiny, tiny amount of reflection in there. Really, really, very, very tiny. Um, and we'll just do the black, let's just turn that specular down a little bit. That's fine. Um, that's fine. And in Infidio now we just have one final bit, which is turn on the fill light and just pull that back a little bit because we don't want it over lighting it. And um, we'll make sure those shadows are quite dark. I'm, I'm looking for pretty heavy shadows here. So we also just will check uh, by turning off the camera where our lighting is. Um, my fill light, I just wanna move around here a little bit more. Cool. And maybe move it uh, in a little bit like that. Cool, and the key light, let's just make sure we tone that down a little bit. Cool. Um, my overhead light's a little bit far away actually, so let's just go to the hair light and drop that down a bit. Cool, right, let's zoom in and let's do a quick render. Okay, now I think that's come out looking pretty close. Um, coloring on this one is a bit better. Um, I seem to have completely missed with the floor. So let's just do a, a little bit of tweaking here and see if we can get this a little bit better. Um, the color on the wood, I would like to get it slightly more orangey. Not quite that much. Um, the color on the floor, 
let's uh, just have that right okay in video uh, controls floor let's just make that a little bit lighter go over there a little bit there we go right okay um, and I'm just going to put a little bit more lighting on the fill light and a little bit more on the key light perhaps the hair light can ramp up just a little bit okay I think that that should be about right so let's uh, render that out for our final one um, we'll go into output let's choose something like 720 uh, just for what we're doing here that's absolutely fine um, and obviously we'll zoom out just a little bit get a good angle on it okay and let's hit render and see how that looks The one bit I think that I'm not completely happy with is is the uh, the darkness of the shadows. I think it's gone a bit too much in there. But I mean, this is all tweaking. This is all things that you can sort of play with. I think also the hair light's now too bright as well because that's we're not we're losing that shapes from the top there. So uh, these are all the things that you could tweak over and over again. But um, yeah, all in all, that's that's not too bad. That's come out pretty close to what we were looking for. So anyway, there you go. Hopefully that's uh, helped you out a bit and uh, you know you, you you can utilize some of those little bits and pieces uh, Fairly straightforward awesome image uh, the original looks brilliant You know, I've not managed to quite get it as good as that, but uh, you know spend a bit of time and you never know um, But obviously it's more about just learning the techniques rather than how to copy verbatim um, So yeah, so until next time catch you later. Bye. -bye.